Moonlight and Ashes by Sophie Masson. So this is a Cinderella retelling sort of thing um, by an Australian author. Hooray! And it was sent to me by Random House Australia. Bless them, and this is one of the books I didn't request, so they must have been snooping or just known that I like my fairy tale retellings. They're like, we'll send this to Renee. She'll have fun. So I'm very th grateful, thank you, to Sophie Masson, who I've said hello to on Facebook, and um, to Random House for sending me this. And yes, it is a Cinderella retelling, but not entirely. It is, it is more than that. It, it is indeed more than that, and in some ways less than that. It's hard to explain. It concerns this lass here, whose name is Selina, and she is, of course, the Cinderella of the story, and she's living with her really ignorant, neglectful father, um, who has remarried to a bitch, and uh, there are two uh, stepsisters, both of whom in this instance are not nice. Um, although one is sli- it seems to be the dealio. One is- okay, one is slightly, slightly more redemptive than the other one, but for the most part both aren't very nice. Um, and, yeah, just living with them. And she has no interest in going to a ball or anything. That is not her dream. Her dream is simply to escape. Um, and cease living with, with these awful people. Um, but she has a secret, um, a, an inheritance, a heritage that is, uh, not pleasant and something that she feels a lot of shame and worry over, and that is that her mother was a moon sister, which is a witch. And moon sisters are outlawed, and the practice of magic and stuff is is banned in the kingdom that she lives in. I've forgotten what the kingdom is called. Um, the only ones who practice it are the those people. They're like a formation of you know bad guys who uh, hunt down anyone practicing magic. But they, of course, are complete hypocrites and practice magic themselves, but for their own evil doing, law law abiding, you know, control stuff. And I really would tell you, mancers, that's what they're called, mancers. And, um, yeah, they're like a, a gang of totalitarian monks, really, that walk around and try and accuse young women of witchcraft. And lock them away and stuff. And so there's always this threat that that will, that, um, Selena's, uh, magical blood will be discovered and her secret will be revealed and she will be captured and ruined and whatnot, and um, she has never knowingly practiced magic until recently when her powers seem to be coming into things and she's been trying her best to keep it a secret because her mother wanted her to and she promised her mum she would and all such things. But then, um, yeah, there's... What I liked is that this... The, the, the witchcraft element of the book, the, you know, um, the fact that this is Selena's burden to carry in that, was much more... Uh, the overall arc of the story as opposed to it being Cinderella. So, I mean, we get to, like, the ball stuff happens within the first 50 pages of the book and it's over and done with. Like, she's gone to the ball, she's met a prince, she's done all that kind of thing. So that's completely wiped clean and the rest of the story is its own thing, so that's kind of nice in that it's, um, you're expecting to go in and have the typical progression of a Cinderella tale and it's covered right away so you can go on to some new stuff, some, you know, original content. So that was cool. Um, Selena as a heroine, I actually, I liked her a lot because she wasn't, <laughs> she, she wasn't an ideal personality and her actions weren't always great because she's very impulsive, she can be quite snarky and bratty because she's understandably pissed off with a lot of things. She's really mad at her dad. She hates her stepmom and stepsisters. She hates the situation she's in. She resents her mum for this lineage that she's passed on to her. And she's not always really dignified or timid or quiet or polite or any of those things that we come to associate with a Cinderella figure. And, um, yeah, she's not always that mature either. She can be really whiny and, and petulant and things. And she doesn't hide it. So that's kind of, I always, I always appreciate it when a character is not 100% fantastic and is honest and open about that. So the writer isn't, doesn't feel like the writer is painting this person to be, seem perfect when they're not. And I always appreciate that. So yeah, Selena felt quite real to me really because she was just a bit of a brat sometimes. Um, but you still wanted to see her prevail. Um, uh, another thing that I like, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, so maybe I'll say that slight spoilers in the title, but whatever. Um, the prince of the story is not the hero, which is nice. Um, the prince that we meet at the ball is a douchebag, and he's a bit of an arrogant twat, and he kind of attempts to uh, sexually 
attack or assault um, Selena, and so you don't have a very uh, nice view of him, and Selena's opinion of him is is really poor. So the like the romantic kind of lead of the story is a dude named Max, and he's um he's pretty decent. I didn't mind Max at all actually. He was he was quite okay. Um, I was happy for maybe 20 or so pages in the book because it wasn't too insta-lovey, really, but then very, very quickly after that, it, it became so. Which, see, the, okay, my ultimate issue with the whole insta-love argument is that it would be fine if the word love was not used. If they just addressed this infatuation and things as being a crush, as being a sudden interest in a person, or just a sudden attraction to somebody, that would be okay, but the fact that it is called love so much and so often is what irritates me and gnaws at my very soul, because you do not, I'm sorry, you do not fall in love with someone after two days, and two, not even two conversations between Selena and Max, and she is saying she loves him, and she is saying that um, he is her beloved and her sweetheart and all these sort of things, and I'm thinking, but how? Like, I was honestly thinking, I don't have anything against either of you two as characters, but you have honestly had next to no interaction with one another at all, and in that interaction there has been no reason for either of you to decide that you love one another, and all of a sudden, you're in love with this person. How? How? I don't, I don't understand. How does this happen? Seriously! So that pissed me off, and of course, as it always does, the romance side of things therefore cast a bit of a dark shadow over the rest of the content of the book. Um, the rest of the content of the book was okay. It, for the most part, um, because it was a rather short story, really, in essence, it was, hold on, it was 318 pages, but it moved, the pacing was quite rapid fire, um, and it felt, it still managed to feel like it was the bones, the skeleton of a better story that could have been expanded upon. There were side characters that we only met for a little while and I wish we could have spent more time with them because they were, as they usually are, a tad more interesting than the leads. Um, and there was just stuff going on because it's about witchcraft and it's about this society that's um, ruled over by these hypocritical, this hypocritical like society um, of, of mancers and like the notion of when witchcraft came, became outlawed and that kind of thing. I wanted to know more about how all of this worked but we weren't given a sense of it because it was just kind of jumped in, give you a tiny bit of information and off we run. So um, my, some people might like that because you're not bogged down in info and you don't spend too long lingering on stuff, but for me I wanted to know more about what the hell's going on. And um, I do like that Selena's, a lot of Selena's journey in this book was away from Max and even away from every, everybody else. Like She was like, oh, I've got to go and do my own stuff here, do my own thing, la la la. So she found that her the journey she was taking was very much an individual one and something she had to see through herself. And in a lot of respects, it kind of reminded me of when I read Ash by Melinda Lowe, because likewise it's a Cinderella retelling with only a tiny bit of Cinderella in it, really. And Ash was on her own a lot in that, too. And um, again, with Ash, I felt like it was the bones of something that could have been a lot better and a lot more. So um, I didn't have as much of an issue with Ash, the romance in Ash, though. Um, I think I just wanted to find a page where she actually sort of addresses the fact that she doesn't really know Max and yet she loves him and it was, I was when I read it I was like, are you kidding me? That's great! That you're actually addressing that. Um, okay, hold on, I'm gonna have to find it. I'm gonna have to find it. Where is it? Hmm. Hold on, I'll get back. Okay, I found the quote I was looking for in Moonlight and Ashes that kind of addresses the fact that this is insta-love and it's almost meta, but then it's just ignored. But when I read it, I was really excited, and it says here, <coughs> How could anything real exist between us? We were strangers to each other in truth. Perhaps we only had these feelings for each other because we'd been brought together in a strange way. It was the lingering effect of magic. And in time, when that effect faded, what would happen? Perhaps we'd look upon each other with new eyes and not want anything to do with one another. I was like, what? You're actually, that's great! But then it didn't change anything. But the fact that there was that tiny moment of reflection, for me, almost made up for the fact that this is insta-lovey goodness going on. So, um, I was, okay, in conclusion, I was happy that it was a Cinderella story that 
jumped itself outside of its original trappings of that tale and made something else. And I, I did like Selena's vo narrative voice. I thought she was kind of a pretty cool heroine. And um, Max was, there was nothing wrong with Max. It's just that she, I, neither of them knew one another and they were in love. So how does that happen, people? So, yeah, bloody insta-love, packing up everything. Okay, so, um, but I think that this is very much, um, I have a feeling Sophie Masson's work would be really good for the tween set, like, I, I don't know, between the ages of, I don't know, 12 and 15, I would just say, yeah, I might have enjoyed, the, I probably would have enjoyed almost all of the YA that I read a lot more when I was actually a young adult. I would have been a bit more forgiving and more open-minded and, I don't know, <laughs> more willing to, to trust and believe in these kind of idealistic notions. But, um, yeah, I think certainly if you're a younger teen, I think you might enjoy this a lot. And I do want to read some of her other books because they sound quite cute. Um, and, I, yeah, supporting Aussie authors is always worthwhile. Um, also, just something that I don't know why this tripped me out as much as it did, um, but this picture on the front looks like a photo, yeah? But looks like a photograph, like photoshopped with other stuff, but the more you stare at it, you realise it's actually a painting, and that's creeping me out. I don't know why it creeps me out. It just does when I realise that that person is not actually there. It's a picture. I don't know why that... Yeah, just creep me out. Also, just a slight thing, this novel was somewhat anachronistic. I have no idea when it was meant to take place, because every now and then they'd go places or they'd acquire objects, and I'd think, wait a minute, would you, would you have that then? When is this? When is this? So I don't... Yeah, it was never stated exactly what the time period was, so I was a tad confused, because every now and then they'd go to like a store and I think I don't think that kind of store existed then or they'd go to like a, a lavatory and I'm like but you, I thought you said you had a bedpan what huh so yeah there were some anachronisms simply because I don't know when it was meant to be so um yeah but I will give it what will I give it what will I give it I will give it 3.5 stars out of 5 maybe I'm being a bit generous but I do like the fact that it, it made its original its own story out of something so yeah 3.5 stars um, out of 5 for Moonlight and Ashes by Sophie Massey.